Hi friends, how are you? Hi, hi, hi. I'm so glad you're here. Yay! Um, welcome. Please let me know if you can hear me. I have a new setup in my living room. It felt a little bit appropriate to escape the office and come and sit in this space for this today. Hi guys. Oh my gosh, this system that we use, it shows your comments really big so that I can see them from back here. Um, I'm nervous <laughs> and I don't usually get nervous on Facebook Lives because I've done them so much, but oh, y'all, this means so much to me. Hi. Okay, time for some coffee. Okay guys, take your shoes off, get comfortable. I'm going to get comfortable. My kids are with my mom. She took them to breakfast and I'm so excited to tell you about this book. Here she is. Um, let me start by saying every book I've ever written means so much to me and I have poured my heart into every single one of them. I don't know how it happened, but this book just, I mean, it was therapeutic writing it <laughs> and I don't think I've ever poured my soul into something as much as this little light blue book. Um, this was not an idea for a book that I had early. This was a book that the concept was literally thrust in my lap in the middle of like a very teary conversation with my husband. And um, I'm going to tell you all the details. So how did it come to be? I signed a contract for two books. So this one and another one that is, I, I, don't, I don't know what that one's about yet. <laughs> but I knew that I was going to start writing in January of this last year. And the holiday season just about did me in. Um, and you're getting very real and raw, Emily, now and in this book. So bear with me. I will cry on this live at some point. Um, not because there's anything to cry about with this message, but because it's just so deeply entangled in my heart, in my career, in the way that we structure our family life. It just means so much to me. So um, I knew I was going to start writing and I had all these ideas of books that I was going to write. And, you know, I, Grace Not Perfection was my first one. And it was my, I mean, it was my baby. It was my, my story. Um, there's a lot of stories in Grace Not Perfection and in A Simplified Life there are a lot of tactical tools. So I sat down to think like, am I going to write another tactical book or am I going to write a book similar to Grace Not Perfection that is, you know, a lot of storytelling? Um, I would say, that's a question I've gotten a lot. This is very much along the lines of Grace Not Perfection, but like a deep dive, like a real deep dive. Um, so anyway, I knew I had to write a book. I knew there was some, I knew there were things in my heart and I had things I want to write about. I just didn't know what it was. And I wanted to write something that I cared a lot about. Um, because if you know anything about me, if I don't, if I don't care a lot about it, if I'm not excited about it, I can't put my all into it. So I sat down with my husband one afternoon. Well, it was at night after we put the kids down. And I, I just did, <laughs> Brittany, I just saw your comment. Did we make sure she has enough tissues? I didn't, I don't have any. I'm not going to be good. I'm going to be good. I have makeup on. I got to, okay. So sat down with Brian and was like, B, like I have so many ideas and I just don't know which one is the one. And as we started talking and talking, he was like, what is it that's on your heart that you feel like you could write about forever? Because he knows I love to write. He was like, you're going to have to pick something you really, really care a lot about. And I got really frustrated and kind of like slammed my fist down on the couch. I was like, I'm so overwhelmed. Here we go. I'm so overwhelmed. Like life is so busy. I knew I was going to, I thought I would make it at least five minutes into this without crying. Life is so busy and I'm, I'm so, I love everything so much. I love my kids. I love our life. I love my job. I'm so fortunate to have all of it. And I don't, that's not lost on me, but I'm so tired. Oh, Lord, I do need tissues. Um, and I just feel like I shouldn't be allowed to feel that way because everything is so wonderful. But I feel so overwhelmed. And I use the word empty. And he was like, okay, wow. <laughs> like, that's a big word, Emily. And I was like, yeah. And I, I, I'm hesitant to use that word because I feel like, who am I to feel this way, to feel so burned out 
and the girl that runs a company called Simplified that's all about simplifying life and making it easier. And I do all of those things and they work on the surface. But like, what's deep down in there that's making me feel this way? That's making all these women that I'm connecting with, when I use that word, when I use that empty word or that burned out word or that overwhelmed word on Instagram or in blog posts or in books or anywhere, the engagement and the, the conversations that start and the words I hear back from people are so real and raw and in a world that feels so superficial sometimes. I just latched onto this concept of why in the world are we all so burned out? Why are we all so tired? And I kept saying to myself, who are you to feel this way? You have no right to feel this way. You have everything you ever wanted and you have no right to feel burned out. But I did. And that's how the book was born. <laughs> I said, who am I to feel this way? And who am I to not feel joyful all the time? Who am I to not feel, to not feel all the real and good and hard and awesome feelings of this life with three kids and this business and this team and this family? Who am I to not just relish and love that every single day and to not just be able to slow down and savor it? And that word savor just kind of stuck in my head is like, who am I to not be able to do that? I'm so busy and I'm so tired and there's so much coming at me. I just need everyone to chill out and give me a minute, if we're being honest. Um, and so he, <laughs> Brian's great. He's, he's the voice of reason in many circumstances and he knows how to like make me laugh when I need it and he knows how to encourage me when I need it. And he also knows when to say, you need to get up. <laughs> you need to get up and you need to write that. That's, that's your book. And I was like, no, well, that's not my book. Like, that's just the way I feel right now. And he was like, Emily, look how much you care about this. And I started just thinking about the concepts we're teaching with Simplified, how important they are. And like, what is it that underlines, that underlies this, this societal epidemic of burnout and overwhelm? Why is every woman, almost every woman I know, why is she so tired? Why is she so exhausted and so burned out? And I felt like there were so many women like me in my personal life, my personal like friends here, um, in my family, in our you know simplified sisterhood, in our community, in our customers. So many people were feeling this way. And why is that? And is there a better way? And y'all, I quit everything starting January 1st. And I didn't decide I was going to do it till December 31st. God bless Team Simplified, who the night before I just randomly decided to take 30 days away, they were like, yes, like you go and live this. You need it. And this book is going to be great. And so I took 30 days away from social media. I took 30 days away from my phone. I took those days away from not my everyday responsibilities, because obviously those have to get done, but I just decided to live a different way for a little while, to slow down. And my depth of focus over those 30 days went from way out here to right here. And I started to realize what it is that's making us all feel so tired and so burned out. It's an epidemic. And it is a uniquely female epidemic, I believe. And the beautiful part of this entire story is that I started looking at my daughter, who is four and a half, and I'm going to somehow, without slobbering all over myself, read you a letter I wrote to her. The book opens with a letter to Caroline, and it ends with a letter to Caroline. And um, <laughs> I'll show you a little bit about the process of writing the book before I get into all that, but the beautiful part of this is there is a better way. And this, and this is not my story of climbing the mountain and getting to the top and me waving my flag to say I've made it. I feel like this every single day. And the journey I went on to discover how less can truly be more, how a slower life can truly be savored, that journey, I, I dig into the tools you need. Like imagine you're climbing this mountain, right? We're not going straight to the top. We're circling. 
We're figuring out what tools we need, who we need on our team to help us get there. We're figuring out what we can let go of to lighten the load as we go up. And we start to realize that if our load's too heavy, we're missing a lot of the scenery, of the beautiful parts along the way. Um, that has been my biggest lesson in this. And although there are things in this book that I don't do perfectly even now, it has created a standard for me that in my everyday life I look at and say, I want to get back to that. I want to get back to that. I question everything in this book. Everything. And um, it was really fun to write. I'm in my living room. I wanted to do this here because when I sat down to write the book, I, what I did is my, I've told you all the process of writing books the whole way, right? Grace Not Perfection I wrote in eight weeks every night after the kids went to bed in the, my local Starbucks. A simplified, write, a simplified Life I wrote in four days. I know, that's insane. But I wrote in four days at my parents' house, like 24-7 for four days. Um, this book took me 30 days, the month of January, I wrote from 8 o'clock to 2.30 every day while my kids were at school in a house that was silent, without a phone, without social media. Well, I had my phone because I voice recorded everything, which I'll tell you in a minute. But um, it was beautiful, and it was such an amazing process to write that I know it's going to impact you when you read it. I just, I just know it is. I can't even get through the audible version reading it without sobbing halfway through. So... Anyway, I sat on this little couch right here and wrote, and every time I would write a portion, I would read it into my phone. Um, I would write, and then I would read it into my phone, and then I would send it off to Team Simplified, and they listened to every single piece of it and gave me feedback and ideas. Some of them even allowed me to share their stories. Wit, thank you. Um, is this a book for just moms? Absolutely not. Moms are not the only ones burned out in this world. <laughs> not at all. Um, do I talk from a place of being a mom? Absolutely, because that's the life I live. Uh, but there's so much in this book that's applicable to everyone in every, every, every season. Anyway, voice recorded it, sent it to my team. They would listen to it, send it back. Also sent it to my best friend, Kristen, who's also a twin mom. And she gave me feedback as well. And then lastly, I sent it to my mom. Um, and my mom told me, that this book will be the best gift I can give my kids. Um, yeah. <laughs> I was going to sum that up, but that's it. Is that it'll be the best gift to them to tell them that they don't have to live this fast-paced, frantic life that the world is telling them is the right way to do it. They just don't at all. Okay, here we go. I think I shared all of the important early things. Would you guys like to hear some? Whoa, it just got really bright. All right. The light's changing because there's a thunderstorm. Hang on, guys. I'm just going to turn the, my camera down just a tad. Yep. Hold on. Is that better? There we go. This is live. Grace, not perfection. Okay, hang on. Um, first of all, I wrote the, well, I read the audible version as well. I fought for it. <laughs> I took those little, those little voice recordings and used them as my audition tapes and my publisher let me read it and it was really fun. I'm going to read three excerpts from here. If you have questions, please post them here and then, um, Dusty is going to gather them and then, uh, put, send them to me, text them to me at the end and I will... I will read them to you guys. Um, okay. Let me also say, so I don't really prepare for Facebook Lives because I just kind of talk better off the cuff and I'm less nervous, but um, this one was different and I just have a lot of things I want to tell you guys, so I have to make sure I tell you all of them. In the book, it's not just my story. I shared, I was very honored to share two stories. One from uh, Whit, Whitney Hawkins on our team. We call her Whit. Um, Whitney's story is the story of just having had a baby and how hard and beautiful that season was for her and how she found ways to really fill herself up in her garden. And it is an absolutely beautiful story that I was so honored to be able to tell. I also tell the story of 
one of my best friends, McKay Pittman, who decided along the way in her journey as a mom that alcohol wasn't letting her live her best life. There was no problem. It was just not letting her live her life to her fullest. She felt like it just wasn't helping her be the best person she wanted to be. And she totally removed it from her life about three years ago. And um, having watched her go through that, I have been so proud of her and inspired to look at not just that in my own life, but like sugar and other vices that we all have um, of all sorts. I have to I have to say also, one important part of this book is looking at the ways we fill ourselves up and what we turn to when we feel overwhelmed. And we all turn to a lot of different things. Sometimes it's social media, sometimes it's food, sometimes it's alcohol, sometimes it's relationships that aren't good for us. There's a lot of different things. Um, but in the book, I do address the mommy wine culture that absolutely makes me sad. Um, at one point in my life, I think I thought it was funny and had those napkins that said, like, it's wine o'clock somewhere or whatever. Um, but seeing the T-shirts and stuff in the, tar the, the, like, retail stores of the world, any of them, uh, I'm really glad my daughter can't read because the mommy needs wine, raising strong girls, send wine. Like, I think that it's sad. And I think mommies and women of all sorts need a whole lot more. We need trust. We need truth. We need friendship. We need rest. We need real soul care. We need a whole lot more than that. Um, so throwing that out there, that that's another thing we really dig into. Like, How do we really care for ourselves? And are we turning to things that maybe aren't helping us be lighter and wholer, whole, more whole? Um, and that's, I think, one of my one of my favorite parts of the book is digging into like how are we filling ourselves up? How are we pulling ourselves out of this overwhelm? So many ways we can lighten the load, and we can embrace a life that is slower and less, and we can say no to a lot of things and say yes to a lot of things that really, really enrich our lives. Um, okay, um, so this is this is a this is called a book block. Okay getting bright again. This is called a book block. And what that means is that inside it's blank. <laughs> so the, for the spirit of full transparency, I'm going to show you that I took the, like the edited version of the, like the PDF that we edited and sent off to be printed. It's being printed right now. And I, and I taped it into the book just because I really wanted to be able to read from the book. <laughs> so hold on, I'm going to turn that. I'm going to turn this down just a little bit more. Okay. Is that better? Cool. All right. All right, y'all. Sorry, I need more coffee. Okay. <sighs> I can read this without crying. This is not a sad book, y'all. This is not sad at all. It just is like right here, you know? Okay. This is the very, this is how the book opens. I'm going to spoil it for him and read the whole thing just this letter to Caroline, because this is what it's all about. Dear Caroline, one day when you're feeling stuck, I hope you pick up this book. I want to begin by telling you a little about who you are right now. You're four years old. You have the sparkliest blue eyes, the rosiest cheeks, and a strong body made for jumping, flipping, splashing, and dancing. You are loud. I'm not even sure you know how to speak at a normal volume. You say everything with boundless energy, enthusiasm, and expression. You are delighted by tiny yellow flowers in the yard, weeds, being mommy's clothes helper, doing the laundry, and picnics, eating anything while sitting on the floor. When you tell someone you love them, you almost always do it with both hands on either side of their face gently squeezing while you speak about one inch from their nose. Your entire face squished into the happiest, most surprised, I love you so face you can muster. You tell people you love them as if your heart may burst if you don't squeak the words out in this very special way. You are everything good and happy in the world. I use those words on purpose, not great or magnificent, because 
those words sound grand and maybe a little exhausting. You are pure goodness and light balled up tight into the shape of a little girl. My prayer is that you forever stay this way. But I'm 36. My mom tells me that I was the same little girl as a child, unabashedly joyful. Now I have three children and a husband and a job. I love each of them dearly, but they keep me busy. I have laundry and a mortgage and a task list, and I wonder, when did I begin to change? I sometimes miss the girl I used to be. You do not have to live life feeling stressed and burned out, Caroline. And if you're feeling that way now, as a grown-up girl, get ready to dig in. An unbecoming is ahead. An undoing, a nourishing, and a filling up. I will walk you through my own journey from stretched too thin to unhurried and joyful in hopes that when you encounter this challenge in your own life, you will know wholeheartedly that you are not alone and that you were made for more. Love, Mom. <laughs> okay, take five. <laughs> and why does that mean so much to me? Because these little girls we're raising, these little boys, all of them, they shouldn't have to live like this. They shouldn't have to live burned out. The world has changed so much in the last five years, in the last 10 years, in the last 30 years. There is information and noise and expectations and standards and so much coming at us from every angle and we don't have to say, okay, we don't have to live like that. We don't have to let that into our lives. You get a choice, at least on some of them. You get a choice. You get to say no. I'm giving you permission, but you get to say no. Okay, next excerpt. This is from, well, before we go there, hold on. I want to read you the table of contents. Um, I want to read you the table of contents. Okay, I'm looking at the time because my camera was in something weird a minute ago, but I think it's okay. All right, um, this is the table of contents. This is how the whole book is set up. It is less is more in each chapter. So chapter one is rush. Less rush, more rhythm. Technology, chapter two. Less liking, more loving. Chapter three, noise. Less noise, more calm. Chapter four, social media. Less distraction, more connection. Chapter five, rest. Less frenzy, more soul rest. Chapter six, wellness. Less fake, more real. Chapter seven, faith. Less fear, more community. Chapter eight, parenting. Less great, more good. Chapter nine is chasing less chasing, more cherishing, and chapter 10 is home, less stuff, more treasures. And then we actually added, um, there's an epilogue, which is a, another letter to Caroline, and then there are resources at the end. There's eight pages of resources, favorite slow living Instagram accounts to follow, um, our, our when less becomes more playlist I made over on Spotify. Um, favorite books about this kind of thing, um, favorite affirmations for kids that go beyond I love you. Um, there's just a whole lot of really awesome resources there at the end. And then Target will have a special edition uh, with uh, an entire section, section at the end called The Keeping of Home. Um, and then Barnes & Noble has signed copies. Okay, had to make sure I said all those things. Okay, here we go. And yes, we're doing a book tour, but I don't have any info on that yet. Okay. The paradox of everyday empty. Oh, and let me say, 18 of you are going to win a cup. This really beautiful cup that um, says, you are made for more. The words I couldn't get out a minute ago. And it's clear and it has it in clear. You can see it on the Simplified Instagram account, but it's really, really, really beautiful. 18 of you. So comment and Taylor is going to choose 18 of you and then give me the names here at the end and I'll try to pronounce them all correctly. <laughs> um, all right. The paradox of everyday empty. Imagine that your life is a bright yellow balloon. As young girls, our balloons are adequately full of responsibilities, allowing space for joy. But as we get older, the balloons begin to change. It's not a slow leak that steals our joy. Instead, little by little, we add seemingly good things into it, one after the other. One more puff of air, followed by another and another. Job, 
jobs, marriage, a child, children, church, volunteer projects, social events, social media, phone calls, text messages, household chores, mortgages, soccer practice, play practice, tutoring, meal planning. A little puff, followed by another little puff, followed by just one more puff. And eventually what happens? At some point, that balloon either outright pops or it just barely holds, stretched taut to its absolute maximum capacity. That balloon has become unfathomably fragile, susceptible to everything around it, ready to burst at a moment's notice. This is the paradox of everyday empty, a life filled to capacity with commitments, possessions, communications, and connections that is deceivingly full, but soulfully and spiritually empty. There is life beyond this. I challenge you to set aside everything you know or believe about pouring out and filling up, about overwhelm and emptiness. Set aside the lies that self-care ends at a manicure and that the perfect organizer will instantly bring order to your overwhelm. Yes, I just said that and I make planners for a living. Becoming the girls God made us to be requires the tedious, difficult work of undoing, unbecoming, and unlearning until we are at our absolute basic self then rebuilding, replenishing, and refueling our minds, bodies, and souls. Oh, what the world could be if we all became those joyful, energized girls we once were. Can I get an amen? <laughs> okay, I am going to read, uh, I'm, at, I'm gonna read one more here. And let me tell you too, I'm gonna share details of the launch team at the end, um, the link, will be posted um, on Instagram. And then, just make sure I have this inform information right, because Hannah told me a second ago. Um, oh, let's see. Yep, uh, it'll be posted on Instagram and on Facebook. The link will. Um, well, that's the FedEx guy. One second. You guys, welcome to my real life. Okay, I'm back. This is the FedEx guy. He was so nice. He said one of the boxes was heavy and he was going to bring it inside. All right. Um, back to this. So I am going to read you this last excerpt and then we'll post, well, I'll tell you all the details of the launch team and then we'll post the link to the launch team application on Facebook and over um, on Instagram. Okay? Whew, okay. Uh, this section is called, uh, You Can Do It All, But Should You? We have a finite amount of focus and a finite amount of space in our brains. Neither of these is unlimited. This has to be the single most revolutionary re realization for me. You and the woman who existed a hundred years ago, before television and computers and the internet and smartphones and t-ball leagues and iCal, have the same mental capacity in your head. Her core focuses were different than yours are now, but she had a much smaller pile of things that required her daily thoughts and attention. You have hundreds, if not thousands more. That space in your head and heart is sacred. Protect it as holy and allow only what's truly significant in. This is where you must be brave. This is where it's easy to get stuck. We can believe the lie that we must do things the way we always have. We can believe that we are powerless in our circumstances and therefore powerless against a future as burned out women. Or we can believe that God made us for more. We can make choices that allow us to be women who have inner calm and outward joy. You were not created to be constantly overwhelmed. You were not created to function at max capacity day after day. You have not been forgotten. You are a daughter of a king. You have the power to make choices about the way you live your life. You are precious and special and significant. You can opt for a life of less. You can say no to the world constantly telling you to be, do, and have more. You, like sweet Caroline, are capable of being a bright yellow balloon adequately full of goodness and joy, whether you are 4, 14, 40, or 94. Destiny is a decision. So much in this world is out of control. 
But even if just a little, we can manage what happens within the walls of our hearts and homes, then this is holy work. So I'm going to leave you with that. <laughs> I love this book so much, you guys. I hope you love it as well. Um, it truly, and I've told Caroline this a hundred times and she has no idea what this means because she's four, but it is truly an anthem for women who don't want to live life the frantic way the world is telling us we have to. And I hope to goodness when she is of age and reaches that in her life, whether she is 14 or 24 or 64 or 94, I hope she picks this up and realizes that God made her for something else. He didn't make her to be burned out all the time. And I have to say, honestly, um, my life has been a lot different since I wrote this book. I have I dug into things in this book that I, I hadn't unearthed before um, and questioned things that I thought were just status quo and par for the course. You know, do we have to do this? Do we have to do that? Do I have to, you know, have certain things in my life? No, we don't. Um, so I hope it means a lot to you. And I really appreciate you guys getting on here and joining me for this today. It has been fun. And um, we've got like 90 something days until the book releases. Um, so I know that's a long time. It comes out November 12th. The original release date was November 5th, but then we ended up adding some content to the back and those resources I told you about. And so we pushed the release date by a week. So November 12th will be the big day. There will be a book tour. Um, I'll give you all the information on that as soon as I have it. Launch team wise, we're taking the first 500 people. Why are we capping it? Because we want it to be manageable uh, in total honesty. We want to be able to connect with everyone there. You do not have to have a certain amount of followers to join. I fully believe that every single woman has influence in her own circle, in her own life, um, in her own community. And my hope for the launch team is that we can all just connect and help spread the word about the book. And so I'm going to preemptively say thank you to those of you who are interested. If you don't end up in the launch team, please don't worry about it. Um, we'll be posting all kinds of images and things that you are more than welcome to share. It would mean the world to me. Uh, posting reviews also on release day, those open up um, after you've read it would mean a lot to me as well. Um, let me see. I wrote down all the launch team details. So let me make sure I share those with you. Isn't it like the FedEx guy would come right in the middle of this? It's like the perfect example of so many things happening with him. Mm. Okay. Let's see. Launch team. Um, so the launch team, we're going to post the application link. And you can go to the application link, fill it out. When you get to the thank you page, there'll be a link to the secret Facebook group. You just copy it, paste it into your browser, and join. Um, we are going to provide graphics and photos for social media and blogs, um, exclusive Facebook lives with me where I'm just going to pop on and chat and get the conversation started and um, that kind of thing. Uh, access to our launch team captain. Taylor uh, is our marketing director and is also married to my brother and she's awesome and she is going to be um, our team captain so she'll be there to answer questions and facilitate and then you're also going to get an advanced copy of When Less Becomes More. It'll be a digital copy, uh, an advanced reader's copy, and I'm not sure exactly when that will be ready, but it'll be closer to, to the release date. What we ask from you if you're joining the launch team, we would love for you to just commit to sharing about the book anywhere you can. Um, during the, like leading up to it, during the, the week of, and then um, also posting reviews to all the places. Um, reviews mean a lot. Um, and then engaging with our, our posts and our communities about the book. Um, we're going to have some conversation starters over there too every week where we can just get the conversation going about this. And again, if you're not part of the launch team, we're going to be doing some fun things in social media leading up to the release as well. And so we would love for you to take part no matter what. Okie dokie. All right, let me look at my phone and see if we have any questions. Um, oh my gosh, <laughs> I have so many texts from friends who are watching this. <laughs> Thank y'all. Wait, thank y'all. <laughs> I have a laptop right here with all your, uh, all your comments. Hey, Gina Halfley, are you on here? Hey, friend. Oh, okay. Um, can you move the release date up to tomorrow? I wish. 
So I've not actually seen like a full copy of the book. This is what we call a book block for photos and the inside's blank, but I taped, I taped the cutouts of the stuff that I read in here because I just really wanted to like read from the book. <laughs> Uh, is there going to be a book study for this book like Grace Not Perfection? Not that I know of, but dear Thomas Nelson, if you want to do one, like I'm game. Book study guy sounds fun. Where is my top from? <laughs> uh, J. Crew, but it's old. It's like a couple years old. Did you write this as being on the other side of your burnout, overburdened journey, or still navigating? Both, honestly. Like I think I had come out of. It, here's the thing with burnout. It's cyclical, right? Like it, we feel burned out and then we put all the things into place and then it happens again. And it's like this, this cycle of like in and out of burnout, being okay, burned out, being okay, burned out. And what I was trying to figure out was how do we get, how do we just get out? Like how do I just not get back to that overwhelmed feeling? Now I've learned that that just is part of the course. It happens. It will happen again. But digging into these concepts of questioning everything and really like realizing there are tools I could put into place to make to lighten the load to really embrace the idea of less and in that discover so much more that has been the most awesome part of the journey so my answer to that question is it's just all been part of the journey have I reached a place where I feel like I've gotten beyond it absolutely will I always stay in this space probably not his life, right? Um, but I've learned the things to put into place to get back to where I want to be. And I think in writing this book, I realized like where I want to be. Can I give you an example since we're since we're here? One of the ways that I, one of the things I started to think about when I was writing about parenting was some of the ways that we have embraced modern conveniences. And we've just automatically accepted them, being reactive rather than proactive. We've been like, oh, well, this can be done faster and easier. Yes. How can I fit more onto my plate and get all the things done, right? And I've done that a lot. Um, but it, the, the answer is not how can I fit more into my plate and organize it the right way. The answer is how can I remove things from my plate? Maybe not just commitments, but maybe just things that don't need to be there. Noise, right? The constant background noise of the television in your home. Do you have to always have that on? No. Right? The constant, you know, riding in the car with the radio on and commercials going while you're trying to talk to your kids. Do you have to have that on? No. Um, here's one story that I wrote about. When I was a little girl, uh, my mom, I think this is where I fell in love with books and reading and writing. There was this thing in Pensacola called the Bookmobile. Okay, if you're from Pensacola and you visited the Bookmobile, I just need you to like give me a high five because it was so cool. Our public library took like an old RV and they turned it into the Bookmobile and they packed it full of children's books and they drove it up to the Kmart parking lot by my house and parked in the parking lot and my mom would take me to the Bookmobile and we got to go inside and there would be like one little beanbag chair and a bunch of books and I would sit there for a little while and dig through all the books and they were like old and aging and I would find which books I wanted to take home and read and you know everything from the little kid books all the way up to Babysitter's Club and Nancy Drew I would I would dig and I would find them and um, my mom and I would drive them home and I would immediately dive right into them what do I do now when my kids want a book I buy it on Amazon and it comes the next day Something is being missed when we allow, when we always allow the conveniences of the modern world to take root. And I've never questioned that. I mean, hello, Amazon's delivered the next day and it's like super cheap and then we own the book and it's awesome, right? But when I realized that, and then I sadly realized the bookmobile is no more, I took my kids to the library and we got library cards. And the library is like not too far away. And so... Now we go to the library more, and y'all, it's so much cheaper than buying them on Amazon. But my kids get that experience of going and sitting and looking through all the books and making their choices, rather than me just being like, done, be here tomorrow. There's something that we're missing. I also heard a story about car washes, right? When I was a little girl, my dad and I used to, used to go and um, fill the bucket with the soapy water and we'd wash the car together and he'd spray me with the hose and I'd put bubbles on him and 
it was just this whole fun thing because it's hot. We live in Florida. And now I just go to the automatic car wash and drive through. And that's convenient and awesome. And so is Amazon. And I still do those things from time to time. But sometimes it's fun to get out the bucket and the hose and and do the thing that we're kind of missing when we just automatically opt for the path of least resistance. There's a lot of beauty in the path of most resistance sometimes. Um, so that's just another thing we dig into here. Okay, back to questions. Sorry, I got off on a big tangent. Um, can we get the Target edition somewhere else too? Uh, no, those are just at Target. Have three boys. Does it apply to little men too? Yes. Yes, the impact in the parenting chapter, I wrote a lot about my oldest. Well, not about him in particular, but things that apply to what I've learned in parenting a little boy and a boy who's eight. Um, and it, yeah, absolutely. This, this book, obviously I dedicated it to Caroline and I'm writing it from a place of being a mom of three, but it is absolutely not specific to moms only. Um, I think this is applicable to women in any season with any family makeup whatsoever. Okay. Uh, did I understand correctly that the keeping of home section will only be in the Target editions? Yes. Uh, will the Audible versions have the extras at the end? Ooh, such a good question. So the Audible version, oh y'all, I give you my mom's applesauce re muffin recipe too. Such a good one. Um, the Audible will come with a PDF, um, so like when you get, when you get the Audible version, um, you'll get a link to download a PDF that has all the fun all that fun stuff. And just like my other books, this is this is qualified as a gift book, which means inside it there are you know lots of photos, um, there's lots of uh, hand lettering, uh, there's lots of you know journaling pages and that sort of thing. And while we're on that note. I have to give a major thank you to Team Simplified for helping me so much with this book, for holding down the fort while I wrote it and edited it, and also to Jessa Gray, who um, had, she, I mean, she, she lettered and illustrated this cover and so much of what's inside. Um, so major thanks to Jessa for that as well. All right, let's see. I think I got all of your questions. Um, Jen and Jane, I love you. Thank you for your text. Um, okay, all right, y'all. I have our 18 winners for the cups. Are you ready? I'm going to do this. Then we're going to call this thing done, and we're going to go post the link to the launch team. Uh, please don't be, y'all, I really wish we could open it up to everybody. Please don't be sad if you don't, if you're not in it. Um, obviously, I wish we could let everybody in the whole wide world in it. But if you're not, there will be tons of ways to help spread the word. And I will, I promise you I'll post those um, to Instagram and Facebook as well. Okay. I think I can pronounce all these last names. Yes. Okay. I'm going to do this real fast. All 18 of you. I'm going to read your names. And then we are going to come on here and post a link where you're going to click that link and put in your address. The reason we're doing it this way, instead of having you email someone, is because there's 18 of you, and we're going to um, put, get all your names in a spreadsheet so we can easily ship your cups out to you quickly. Are you ready? Here we go. We'll, we'll put this list in here. Yep, Taylor just said she'll post the, the link for you to fill out. Um, I'm not, we're also going to post these names, so if you miss one, um, or if you aren't sure if I called your name, here we go. Cheryl Smith, Jennifer Myers, Kate Theobald, Stephanie Liller, Sabrina Rodriguez, Brianna Priest, Suzanne Dixon, Julie Clay, Chrissy McBride, Lizzie Miller, Emmy Banks, Amanda Hedgepeth, Nicole Russell, Bethany Vestal, I hope I said that right, Emily Branch, Bailey Caldwell, Ashley Pullen, and Nikki Crone. Um, if we said your name, go and put, uh, we'll post a link here for you to go and fill out, okay? All right, y'all. Thank you. This was so fun. I could not be more excited about this. The cups won't be for sale. Um, we would love to make cups one day, but we just haven't. So who knows? But as of right now, nope. Um, thank you for being so excited about this. November 12th is the big day. And if you have any questions, please let us know. But I really appreciate your excitement and your connection with this message a whole lot. All right. Y'all have a wonderful Monday. Bye.